interesting one here for the last pick as the Rumble is going to be locked away. I love Equalizer and Bullet Time. That is a cool combo. Incredibly strong combo, and I have liked the Viego. Your level one MF is really going to struggle to do anything here, so they just have to sit back and wait. She'll, of course, be able to heal up with the pot and the biscuit, but still, really nice trade here for FPX early. Yeah, we saw Han Sama go for the... Oh, they're going again. Yeah, level two actually just gained it. Trimby's gonna get taken down. That timing. harder. You can see three versus two there in the mid lane is now Oduwamne having to deal with Nogri. He's just going to combo him. Bombed him away as Chris. Now down to about half health as Inspired has to safeguard his way out. Didn't want to go too deep on that one as Tian in the meantime is just taking Shelly by his lonesome Oduwamne looking to try and get down here the flash forward from Nogri it's a lot of damage and that is the Rumble just taking down a solo kill for Nogri for the second for the game for FPX but it's not over just yet Trimby's still in the middle of this fight as Tian the Heartbreaker comes in the bullet time is avoided and he gets himself out of there now again a friendly deficit for Rogue the Drake goes over to FPX as well that should be able to just make it a good team fight and of course if you can layer all of those ultis together things could definitely work out of Nogri. No flash, remember. Larson looks for the chains, doesn't find them. Is now Nogri looking to turn it onto Oduwamne, but he's just going to get burnt down, and Larson picks up that kill in the end. Doinby turns up a little bit late, as in the meantime, on the bottom side of the map, Rogue doing it. Really, really nicely done. Only got hit by one bullet as well off that curtain call. Very nicely done. So uh, certainly making things work, as now Doinby takes down. Now trying to set up here. Actually, Ooh, chains connect. Yeah, Trimby. Gonna come on in, but he's a little bit too late. And uh, yeah, Tian was just in the right place at the right time. Counter, caster curse there, I think. A little <laughs> come on. <laughs> as inspired, looking for it here as well as Tian's trying to keep himself alive. Doinby though, to protect his jungler, Crisp, roaming up at the same time. Solar flares available as well. He can use it over this wall, but he blast cones in instead. Looks for the Zenith Blade, and he will find it. Still holding onto the ult. He still has even more CC available. In the meantime, it's another solo kill from Nogri uh, somewhere on the map, I think it was on the bottom bottom lane. Everything's just happening all at once here. And you understand the sentiment for Larson because he knows I was able to carry almost against Dharmon. I am reasonably fed, but flashing forward like that is oh, oh no, There's the bullet time just caught back and I think just Ooh. already pointed out there is a lack of lockdown and it's not like FPX really has to hard force with the amount of range that they have available They're up to Drake. They can't really get in there to sweep, they can't play as deep wargs. This means FPX can always threaten and there's no fear that LeBlanc is going to appear. It's still going to be a flash forward though as there's the Glacial Fissure. LWX is going to avoid it though as in goes Inspired, gets the kick back as Nogger is going to get taken down. The bullet time is huge as well, but Tien, he's getting all of the resets and now the curtain call comes in. It's a double kill for the Jin, and now the Realm Warp on top of Han Summer is now now gonna flash, not gonna get deadly flourished, and Larson's still alive as well. Tien needs to be a little careful here as the Heartbreaker comes on over the wall. Not gonna be able to find any more resets, but it was a fight. Of Rogue R, and now you took one bad fight in the <laughs> I like how you said that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a tiny space, but it's there. So yeah, it is. Uh, be there. Hopefully not the overextension like we saw before. Here's one of them. Yeah, it's a big teleport to come on in here. Gale Force forward from Han Sama as Nogari is going to be dead yet again. That's how you do it. You've got to find picks like this. Got to go for Nash. Got to try and force it as hard as you can, surely. But it looks like they don't want to take the risk and they understand it because it is really high risk. But at the same time, any flank or anything like that off at the moment. Inspired moves on over as well. Well, but again, on top of a ward. Trimby isn't, though, as he throws the Winter's Bite over the wall. Larson dashing on forward, looking for LWX, looking to take him out as Hansama channels the ultimate, but everyone in FPX does get themselves out. Inspired, not able to lock down Crisp, as now the Curtain Call comes on in. This is just to soften up the members of Rogue, get themselves out of this Dragon Pit. But FPX's health bars aren't exactly the highest right now. Rogue certainly with a life lead. Yeah, even with the magic resist that Chronicle was talking about earlier, that equalizer is going to do quite a bit of chip here. Look at the angle for Inspired as well. Yeah, teleport coming on in from Nogger as well on the bottom side. This could be a 50-50, and it's one that Rogue needs to win. Crisp, he's too low. He can't actually go in now as the Drake looking to try and reset. They're not going to let it down to 2,000 health. It's Doinby immediately goes golden. Trimby's very low. Crisp flashing out there outside of the pit as Doinby looks to try and grab the Drake himself, but he's not able to. He stays alive, though, for so long. What was he, invisible? That was ridiculous. They're not able to take him out. And FPX lose no one. They do lose the Drake. Rogue saved that. How they've been able to play around their dominance in multiple lanes, make up the Baron, increase their gold leads. 
Looking rough for Rogue. I mean, also, FPX just with such discipline in that fight, they were willing to give the Drake to look for the team fight win instead, which is, it's a win-win scenario for them. And going back to, is it worth it for Rogue? You don't really have Realm Warping forward. They want to end this game very soon. They could force a fight this way, and if Rogue don't respond, they slowly lose the game. And the problem of having turrets, if we get an opening, cool. If not, just need to win the next fight, and we will be. So, Doing Beast got his Banshee's Veil. Killing him even in this scenario is not very easy to pull off. In fact, yeah, he's going to be one even possible. Is there's the flash out from Ansama. He channels the bullet time, but Doinbi was nowhere near it. He's able to get himself out of the way. Had no flash available, but he's still going to be all right. The curtain call comes in. That is going to be the Gale Force getting Hansama to relative safety. Trimby not going to be so lucky. He's got a big door, but unfortunately he doesn't have his life. And FPX with five members on the top side of the map think that this is their avenue into the rogue base. Certainly looks that way, even though we've had some Stormtrooper shots here for LWX this game. <laughs> you think I'm saying real? No, 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 I, I, no, no, I, ca I can't let LWX take credit for missing those. That's Han Sama oh, yeah, going no. full Luke Skywalker, yeah. making sure that all of them miss. But uh, as you point out, I, I don't know if it will matter. It, it, I just certainly don't think it is going to matter, unfortunately, at this stage. This is looking like the beginning of the end. It certainly is, as the Nexus turrets now under fire. Okay. FPX not going to bite off more than they can chew. This has been very disciplined. I mean, outside of Nogri dying all the time. FPX just setting themselves up here in this river. There's another curtain call to Spide come on board, and Inspire's going to step on the trap. And yeah, he, he doesn't have the smite in this pit. That was very, very strange. He was looking for the flank. Instead, he tries to brute force it here as the bullet time comes down. But Doinby has the best item in the game, and he's going to be completely fine. Now, LWX able to walk on in with guns blazing. It's a double kill so far. I believe that's the triple, as the teleport is going to get Larson back to his base. but. Nogri's there first, and he's looking to take down these Nexus turrets. This, I think, is it, ladies and gentlemen. FPX, they're going to be able to grab themselves the Mountain Soul, and then they'll finish off Road. That was very cute from Nogri as well, as he gets the solo kill to finish this one off. FPX looking so much better in this game. Move to 2-1. and one. Yeah, a lot of dis-